Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about Disney's latest incarnation of The Lion King. Based on the 1994 animated classic, this version was directed by Jon Favreau and stars the voice talents of Donald Glover, Beyonce, and Chiwetela Ejiofor. This is where I would put the plot summary, but I really don't need to because the plot hasn't changed from the 1994 film. A few minor details are different, but the overall story is still exactly the same. Which means I don't really have to worry about spoilers. And if you somehow have not seen the original film, it's basically Hamlet, but with lions. And if you haven't heard of Hamlet, you must be less well-read than I am, which is pathetic. Seriously, man, read a book. In recent years, the House of Mouse has been remaking several of their old 2D animated properties with mixed results. I actually kind of enjoyed the new Jungle Book. Aladdin, I was not so high on. And The Lion King... Ooh boy, this did not do it for me. That's not to say there isn't anything good happening here. The story is still great. Uh, really, the only major change they made was with the hyenas. In the original, they were little more than Scar's incompetent stooges, and now they are much more intelligent and basically have their own nation. Scar is not able to simply boss them around and give them orders. He actually has to ask them for help. I, for one, thought this was a pretty good change, because it makes the hyenas more than just jokes. They actually feel like a legitimate threat to Pride Rock now. The voice acting is pretty good overall. John Oliver was the perfect choice to play Zazu. My god, he nailed it. Keegan-Michael Key and Eric Andre voiced two of the hyenas, and they had some funny moments. Glover was pretty good as the voice of Simba, although his singing left a little to be desired. Of course, that's probably going to be true with anyone that has to sing a duet with Beyonce, who does the voice of Nala. I mean, if you're going to do a duet with that level of talent, you have got to be on top of your game. And I don't feel like he was quite there. But the real stars of the show, much to the surprise of no one, I'm sure, are Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen as Timon and Pumbaa. I loved almost every moment that these two were on camera. They are very funny, they play off each other so well, even snuck in a little fourth wall breaking here and there. And Billy Eichner is a really good singer. And Seth Rogen should never sing again. Ever. He was awful. And this time around, Timon does not dress in drag and do the hula, so if you were hoping to see that this time around, I'm afraid I must disappoint you. But what he does instead was actually pretty awesome. But this movie does have its fair share of problems. Some of the voice acting was not so great. And let's start with Chiwetel Ejiofor as Scar. Now, he had some big shoes to fill, considering Jeremy Irons was so good in the original. But, man, I was not feeling him at all. With every line that Irons spoke in the original, you could just feel the mustache twirling. And Ejiofor is much more subdued, and I don't think it helps this character at all. I don't know what it is with Disney trying to subdue their villains in these remakes. First Jafar, and now Scar. And oddly enough, one of the more disappointing performances for me was the one guy they brought back, James Earl Jones. I was surprised at just how much of a step down this was. So many of his line reads just did not have the emotional depth that they had in the 1994 film. Now, to be fair, a mediocre James Earl Jones performance is still miles ahead of most people, but still... I don't know if he just wasn't feeling it this time around, or if the director is to blame, but yeah, this, this was a big step down. The running time is a bit longer this time around, which mostly seems to be because they included a scene where Nala escapes from Pride Rock, which, honestly, I don't think it added all that much to the movie. I think we could have done without it. They made some changes to the music this time around. Uh, Be Prepared got a huge overhaul, which is largely because the nature of the hyenas has changed so much since the original. Uh, the new lyrics are fine, but I wasn't really digging the song just because Aegea Force performance was so subdued compared to Jeremy Irons. The original Be Prepared was a lot more lively compared to the remake, which is almost a dirge, and it really doesn't work. And they added one new song for Beyoncé, which I assume is so they can have a shot at Best Original Song at the Oscars. I don't expect it to win. I don't even remember what the song was called or what it was about. It just, it left me that quick. It was that memorable. 
And of course, we can't talk about the new Lion King without talking about the animation. Oh boy. Now, there's two ways of looking at this. As an exercise in hyper-realistic CGI, it is a goddamn masterpiece and will almost certainly win all of the awards. As a method of telling a story and conveying emotion, it falls flat on its hyper-realistic face. With very few exceptions, there is zero emotion on any of these characters' faces. I can't tell if they're supposed to be happy or sad or angry or scared or whatever. One of the moments that especially looked terrible was when Simba witnesses his father falling to his death. And if you remember in the original when they did that dramatic zoom out, they recreated it here. And oh lord, it did not work. No, that was a mistake. And with the exception of Scar, the lions look way too similar. There were times I had trouble telling young Simba and Nala apart. There were times I had trouble telling adult Nala and Sarabi apart. And because there's so little emotion on the faces and much more restricted movement in the name of realism, some of the musical numbers just feel so lifeless. Especially I just can't wait to be king. I mean, I was getting bored during that one. I do want to make it clear that I am not blaming the animators for this. They did as good a job as they possibly could have, and they're just doing what they're told to do. That's their job. The blame for this lies squarely with Disney and Jon Favreau. This was their call to make, and it was the wrong call. So to summarize the latest incarnation of The Lion King, I am going to defer to a child that was sitting a few seats down for me in the theater who said, as the credits started to roll, I like the cartoon one better. Me too, kid. Me too. While it has its moments, and most of those moments involve Timon and Pumbaa, it pales in comparison to the original. It really does nothing to justify its existence, and I really don't see any reason to catch this one in theaters. You can skip it. And that's all I have to say about The Lion King. Till next time, Hakuna Matata.